Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be talking about three things that I think the Washington Commanders should do before training camp starts in late July. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. We're so close to 8,000 subscribers. So please help me get there also with that like button and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Now let's get right into it. So for the most part, I think the Washington Commanders are done making any you know major moves, but I still think there are some smaller moves that they could and should make before training camp starts. So we're going to be going over a few of those today. You know, they still have a decent amount of cap space even after the Terry McLaurin extension around $13 million. So if they wanted to make a couple minor moves to improve the roster, they could, and I really think they should. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. And I think they really need to add another linebacker. I've been saying this for a while, and I know some people don't think it's a big need. I just don't see how you can not think it's a big need where, you know, Cole Holcomb, I love Cole Holcomb. He is a good linebacker for sure. He's going to likely be playing in the middle. But after that, it's a bunch of question marks. Jamin Davis, he should be a lot better in his second year. And I, I mean, I hope so because he was not good in his first year, but you don't know for sure. And then after that, it's it's David Mayo, Kalik Hudson, and then a bunch of undrafted free agents. Just not a good linebacking core at all. And I put out this tweet earlier, like David Mayo didn't make the initial 53-man roster last year. And now he's the third linebacker on it you know, in this linebacking core. And last year, we had one of the worst linebacking cores in the league. And he's a third linebacker on, you know, this year's team to before the season start. Like, I just think they, you know, it's a big, big position need. Because even, I know people in the comments are going to be like, well, you know, they play two linebacker sets all the time. Well, yes, that is totally fair. But they are one injury away from having David Mayo or Kalik Hudson playing 100% of the snaps. Because though you know that's your third linebacker, David May or maybe Kalik Hudson, who knows? And that's just not something I want to have happen. I don't think David Mayo should really be playing any defensive snaps, but if he is, maybe a couple of game if someone needs a breather. But he's one injury away from playing a hundred percent of the snaps, and that is a big no for me. And I think you know. And even if like these guys are healthy, they will be playing in three linebacker sets sometimes, and he will be playing a decent amount of snaps regardless of you know who is healthy or not. So I just think they, at the very minimum, need to bring in you know a backup that's much better than David Mayo because I think David Mayo is a good special teamer, you know, good special teams player, and maybe like a third string guy, but not a second string guy. Um, so one guy they could bring in that I think is realistic is AJ Klein and he's not a star, but he's like a good, really, really good backup and an okay starter, you know, played for the Buffalo Bills and the Carolina Panthers. So like, I just don't understand why Ron wouldn't want to get AJ Klein, you know, over someone like David Mayo. Cause like, you know, you could say, well, you know, there's 31 other teams that haven't signed him either. And that's true, but there's not many teams with a linebacking core like us. So I think that AJ Klein would be a good move. He played with Ron, you know, under Ron before, played for the Bills, who, you know, Ron likes to take players from the Bills as well, um, you know, because they have a lot of former Carolina guys on that team. So I just think it would make sense to go ahead and sign AJ Klein, who is significantly better than David Mayo and has started for, you know, a bunch of seasons before. So, like, I, I much, much rather have, you know, AJ Klein over David Mayo. He's not insane, but he's solid for sure. Like he had, you know, 2020 had five sacks. And this year was more of a backup because, you know, playing behind Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano. So you expect that, but he's still a very, very solid linebacker and, you know, much better than David Mayo. So, and he's also very cheap. He's not going to break the bank. You probably can get him on the minimum contract or maybe a little bit higher than that. And yeah, I think it would be a solid move and it's a move that would make sense, you know, especially for someone like Ron Rivera who likes to get guys that he's familiar with and this would make, 
that would fall into that category. Another guy is more outside of the box. You know, I don't think Ron's going to go for it, but that's linebacker Alexander Johnson. You know, we've talked about him a bunch on this channel, um, but played for the Broncos last year. Only played six games. I think he had like a torn pack or something like that. But, you know, a lot of 38.9% completion percentage, a 69.7 passer rating in those, you know, six games. So small sample size, but that is amazing right there. And then, you know, had a 0% missed tackling percentage. Anything like under 11 is, you know, very solid. And he had a 0, a 5, and an 8 in the last three years. And then, you know, it's, you know completion percentage allowed isn't amazing in the last three years, but it's not terrible besides 2019. But his pass rating allowed was not bad at 80 and 88.7. That, you know, averaged around 90, I would say. So, and linebackers, it's even higher because they're lying much shorter completions. But, yeah. You know, he would be a good option. I just don't see it happening, but he's one of the better linebackers available. And then you can throw out Anthony Barr, you know, Dante Hightower, you know, Joe Schober, guys like that, you know, are solid linebackers available that, you know, definitely better than David Mayo. But I just don't know if Ron would want to go for someone like that. I think he wants someone familiar with the system who can come in and play fine if he, you know, if he comes in in July or August, because, you know, it is late, it is late right now. So it might be hard for some of these guys to pick up the playbook at this point. But AJ Klein's familiar with a lot of the coaches, including Ron Rivera, Steve Russ and others and some of the players as well. So it wouldn't be as hard for him to pick up everything. So I think this could make sense, could happen, who knows? I think Ron Rivera is talking about it. Like there are still some moves to be made and maybe that's an AJ Klein or another position that I'm gonna be talking about a little bit later. So the next move I think the commanders should make is try to extend Cole Holcomb. And I know some people don't really think that, you know, he, you know, Cole Holcomb warrants an extension yet. They want to wait another season, see how he does at Mike. But I think Cole Holcomb has been playing very, very well for the Commanders the last three years. It was a really good pick in 2019 by, I think, I think Jay Gruden really liked him. Um, can't remember for sure, though. Um, had, you know, in his rookie year, 99 total tackles, then 70 in 2020, but was out for five games that year. I think it was like a knee injury. And then 2021, played in 16, uh, 16 games, had over 100 tackles, a sack, two interceptions, and two forced fumbles, and had that pick six against the Dallas Cowboys. So he had a you know solid season, played Mike and outside linebacker. I think he's better suited for the outside, but I think if he is going to play Mike this year, playing you know full off season at Mike, practicing that, you know, learning the positioning and everything and not really having a switch back and forth during the season will help him play better at the Mike position. And, you know, they can extend him because he's going to be a free agent after this year and you, you kind of look at you know how he compares to some of the other linebackers in the league he's been very solid you know 11th most tackles in the nfl this past year second most pack uh, pass breakups with five fourth most combined interceptions and forced fumbles and of course has that fantastic mullet uh so definitely you know i don't think it would be that expensive either and you know the longer you wait with some of these guys you know, the, the more expensive it's going to get, not only because usually they start to get better, but also because the cap goes up. So, you know, I think you could get a deal done. doesn't have to be like a five-year deal, but maybe like a two- or three-year extension. Uh, I think that would be good for Cole Holcomb. They haven't had really great linebacker play in a while. And Cole Holcomb, I wouldn't say he's great yet, but he's very, like, he's above average. He's a good, good linebacker getting to that, like, very good um, spot in my opinion and we'll see how he plays at the Mike position and yeah I mean that and also like I don't think him playing Mike is that big of a deal this year because he's not like in the two linebacker sets you know there's no really true Mike when they do have three linebackers on the field with him David Mayo and Jamin Davis then of course he's going to be playing in the middle and that'll be a little bit of an adjustment but he did it okay last year but was better on the outside so interested to see how he does at Mike kind of full-time but I would give him an extension. That was a very good pick in 2019. And yeah, try to get him around for a lot longer so you don't have to really worry too much about your linebacking core beside, you know, besides him. You're still going to have to see how Jamin Davis produces because if he doesn't do well this year, then you're kind of considering like, okay, we probably need another linebacker. Like they have not invested like 
this offseason they did nothing to address the linebacker position you know besides a couple undrafted free agents which is definitely an interesting you know um, strategy right there and i think ron rivera said let's see right here this was during the terry mclaurin press conference he said uh, Washington isn't done getting contract extensions with current players. It says some of those deals might be next offseason, but there's a three-year plan in place. Rivera says getting that McLaurin deal was a huge step. So could see some extensions come, you know, soon with, you know, Cole Holcomb, maybe Deron Payne. I doubt it. And then there's, you know, some other guys as well. So the next thing I think Washington should try to get done is I really think they need to improve the depth on the defensive line because you got Chase Young, you got Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, uh, you know, Montez Sweat, and even Fedarian Mathis. Like, those are your big five, and they're very solid. You know, you know, Fedarian Mathis, I guess, is kind of depth, but at the same time, he's going to be playing a lot. Like, you know, Matt Ionite has played like 60% of the snaps. I think, you know, Fedarian Mathis is probably going to play around that same, you know, snap total because, you know, you have to think. They also lost Tim Settle, who was playing a little bit as well. So some of those, you know, uh, snaps will go to, you know, Fedarian and maybe some to Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne as well. But if you look at the D line, like besides those guys, there's really no one, you know, that really stands out. I like F.A. Obata and he has some versatility. But the rest of the guys, like, you know, Casey Tuil, he really doesn't, you know, move the needle for me. Same thing with like James Smith Williams. Like these guys are okay. They're borderline, you know, fifty like borderline players, like borderline roster guys, not guys that you want to be your next man up. Cause who knows? Chase Young might be out for a few games, maybe even more. And if he's out, like I really don't want to have James Smith Williams as my edge guy for three, four games straight. Same thing with like Casey Tuil. I'm fine with them coming in for like, you know a few snaps, but not for the whole game. So that's where I would try to go out and get someone. And I think that, you know, there's still some guys out there that were better guys before, like Melvin Ingram was a guy I really thought they should have tried to sign. But, of course, he got signed. I can't remember who signed him. Someone signed him. But, you know, there's still some good guys out there. So they could do that at, you know, defensive end and also D-tackle because they got Fedarian Mathis and then really no true, like, D-tackle. They've got, you know, guys that can play both in James Smith-Williams, F.E. Obada, and Daniel Wise, but they don't have a true true D tackle besides Allen, Sweat, and, you know, Federian Mathis. So someone like Star Lutelelli would make sense, you know, played under Ron before, is a vet, is solid, not going to do anything special, but can come in there and play if he's needed. And yeah, I think that is definitely something they need to work on because it is realistic that Chase Young is out for some games this year. Who knows? He could be ready for the start of the season, but if he's not, you don't want to necessarily have, you know, James Smith, Williams, or whoever that they have right now as your starting edge guy. So that's just something I would consider doing um, at edge and also interior defensive line. So, you know, Star Lutelelli, I know there's some uh, Domkin Sue's out there. There's some, you know, bigger names out there that they could go after. But even just a okay guy, like the level of AJ Klein, I know they're different positions, but someone like that. I think would really, really make sense for the commanders and would help them out. Because I think on like the starters on this defense, besides like linebacker um, and Cole Holcomb, are really, really good. Like Cole Holcomb's good, but the other linebackers aren't. But the starters are very solid on this defense. And same thing with the offense. But the depth, especially on the defense, with you know, I would say corner, linebacker, defensive line isn't the greatest and that's something i think they definitely should work on so thank you guys for watching i hope you guys did enjoy the video if you did hit that like button subscribe if you guys are new and peace